All right, guys and gals, today we are checking out the XSRs, the newest XSRs from uh, FreeSky or FrySky, or however you want to say it. This is the R XSR. I probably can't even really read that. R XSR and the XSR M. Yeah, so we'll check these out, see what they weigh, go over things like that. All right, so the RXSR comes like this. This little white, or the end wire there that I took out is uh, chained two or three of these guys together for redundancy. Um, this all transmits through this one wire. But... Mini quad pilots, we probably won't be using that very much, so I took that off to help with the weight, blah, blah, blah. Really um, short antennas compared to some of the other ones, and they are a little bit thinner than you might be used to, or that I'm used to. Um, let's see. I did update the firmware. Um, easy, but not easy. The newest one is for out of the United States people and uh, so you gotta go down to the next to the newest one make sure you get the right version in it or it won't bind to your radio because your radio is in a different region setup or whatever so that was a little bit annoying but that's what that guy comes with and the XSRM looks like this a little bit bigger not a huge amount bigger but a little bit bigger uh, the the antennas are a little bit thicker than the RXSR and definitely a little bit longer for builds that you have to route your antennas around strange spots these ones are a little bit longer a little bit easier to help you out this one definitely made for like a micro build I, or you know racers can put it on their stuff make it even lighter XSRM has a cool little pad down here that says RSSI that you solder a wire to and then you can do your analog RSSI straight into your flight controller with having, without having to do the, um, the assigning a channel to your RSSI and then broadcasting it and telling Betaflight what channel it is. All work in my opinion. Soldering something on is really easy to me. Um, yeah. Side by side. And that's what you're looking like. Speaking of RSSI, I couldn't find a, the RSSI pad on here and when I searched on Line, there was nothing that really told me anything about it just to assign it to a channel and tell Betaflight what channel it's on. So I don't know if if there is a channel or if there is a pad maybe someone can put a link down below to help everybody out but if not just uh, yeah put it on the channel it seems to work okay. So let's get some measurements of it. So let's see this is the RXSR. R. So this is going all the way back to the end of the connector. They're about 20 millimeters. If you're not going back to the end of the connector, 16 millimeters. Sideways, 11 millimeters. It's super duper thin, but let's say the thickness of the connector with the board, about 5.6. Just the board, about 2.8. That's on a thicker spot with the uh, chips. Uh, the antennas on the RXSR, about 90 millimeters. And exposed portion of the antenna. Is right about 23.5. All right, for the XSRM, we get about 20 millimeters sideways, 
to the back of the connector. You're about 21.5. Let's see, if you're not measuring the connector, 19.9. Um, let's see, thickness with the connector in there, about 4.7, 4.8. Thickness without the connector at the thick part, about 3.2. All right, let's see how long these antennas are. Look to be about 46, 47 millimeters, something like that. Uh, the exposed portion or is 33.5 all right so I have been using the XSRM and everything lately it works really well with the RSSI um, uh, cable connected um, the RSSI seems to broadcast really well uh, I haven't had any trouble with it this is the first RXSR that I have I'm going to be putting in a little two inch build um, so I will let you guys know if I have any trouble with it, but, uh, yeah, there's just comparing the two real quick side by side. Oh, I guess we should get a weight of them. They both weigh almost nothing, but here we go. Here is the RXSR. I'm getting 2.3, 2.2. XSRM XSRM about 3.4 so 1.1 grams more mainly in that connector um, some people were having a little bit of trouble with these holes because they are 15 by 15 not 20 by 20 the board is the 20 by 20 uh, which makes it kind of hard to mount on a 20 by 20 stack if you're going straight down little tip if you're mounting on a 20 by 20 stack tilt it diagonally and go down on it then you just have these little tabs sticking out each side a little bit but it mounts fine just on top I, mean, I put it in between everything, but I use mostly 30 by 30 boards. Um, yeah. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day, guys. Thanks for watching.